God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether accordingly, according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous fare as the wicked? Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. 
will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord.
Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us into the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though you will not get up and give him anything because he is your friend, at least because of his persistence, you will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who is your child asked for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. That phone ring came at a perfect time. When I was a boy, my parents would take me to visit my grandmother during the summer break from school and on holiday vacations. I always loved these trips because I got to see Grandma who treated my brother and me with great fondness and hospitality. We would swim in the pool, hang out at the beach, explore local attractions, and enjoy dinners out on the town like kings. My grandmother, Nana Luella Strasser, was there early on in my young life, supporting my mother and father through those, some of those key formative moments. As time passed and I grew in age, so did she. And when Nana died, it was one of the most challenging experiences at that point in my life. I remember my father breaking the news, us traveling to the funeral home and staring at the urn containing her ashes, trying as a late teen to process what her death meant to me and how I felt about it. As time has continued to pass and the healing of that grief sows new meaning, what I hold on to most in these sacred memories of my past is what she helped me begin to understand about Christ. Interestingly, it is here that I have the strongest recollection of where I first learned in my consciousness how to pray. Getting ready for bed after a long day of play, tired and probably grumpy, sunburnt, and waiting for that sweet kiss goodnight. I remember her coming into the bedroom and teaching us the Lord's Prayer. A light breeze moved through the, the room as the sun set over the sea. Nana instructed us to kneel interlock our hands and fingers and close our eyes. 
And then, word by word, line by line, she called and we responded. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That first time must have been a bungled petition on my part, as I listened to her voice, soft as an angel's wing, leading us through that holy prayer that Jesus first taught his disciples. But somehow, by the mysterious working of the Holy Spirit, that early blink of an eye in the life of a person has remained with me like a rock, a pillar of strength guiding me ever since. After Jesus' telling of the parable of the Good Samaritan and his visit with Mary and Martha, Luke's Gospel turns us toward an encounter with one disciple, Jesus finishes praying in a certain place, and the disciple asks him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. We then hear the model words of the Lord's Prayer come alive, prayed by Christ himself, one of two versions offered in our Holy Scripture. What follows is a teaching on persistence, hearkening back to our Hebrew scripture reading today, when we find Abraham petitioning God unsuccessfully to spare the righteous of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Our gospel closes with a powerful assurance concerning prayer. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. With all this talk from Jesus about prayer, it's important that we build on our foundation with answering, what is prayer? How do we pray? Is it just words we say here today, or is it something more? Our prayer book offers us several helpful definitions to deepen our understanding. Prayer, it says, is responding, responding to God by thought and by deeds, with or without words. And it goes on to describe the principal kinds of prayer. Adoration, praise, thanksgiving, penitence, oblation, intercession, and petition. I remember when I was living in Jerusalem that I really began to develop a more nuanced view of prayer. With witnessing so much prayer going on around me in different languages and religions, I started to look deeper at what prayer means to me and consider how I am called to pray. What I discovered was that prayer is about being in relationship with God, communicating with God, a personal and intimate conversation one that comes alive in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. I discovered that my prayers didn't have to be perfect. They didn't have to just follow ancient tradition and ritual, but that they could take on new life, new language, and creative expression. That prayer is much more than just what I say, but also what I do what we say, and what we do. This broadened perspective helped me to discover the power of service as a form of prayer, that helping a disadvantaged child 
get new school supplies, teaching peace to teenagers, breaking bread with men recently on parole, being a steward of our environment, and doing good deeds in general were all radical forms of prayerful living, of responding to the sin and brokenness of our world with love for God through love of neighbor. With the foundation of the Lord's Prayer, we are called to pray, to respond to all that God has done for us in this life, in offering up a living sacrifice of our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our time, stillness, and silence, our joy, our frustrations, our hopes, and our love. With hands clasped, and with the wide open, with a head bowed low and one raised up high, kneeling and standing, song and dance, in community here at Palmer and beyond these temporal walls. With the Lord's Prayer as our foundation, pray on, my friends. Be prayerful in this life and respond to the love of the living and eternal God, for he listens, he hears, and he answers prayer. Thanks be to God. Amen. Rising in body or in spirit, let us affirm the faith of the church with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and reveal thy glory in the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, especially Joe, President of the United States, Greg, Governor of Texas, and Sylvester, Mayor of Houston, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as thy own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to thy honor and glory. 
Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially patients across the street in the Texas Medical Center. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of thy salvation. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, that they that thy will for them may be, be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all thy saints in thy eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son and his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess to these Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon you, and deliver you from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning and welcome to Palmer Church. It's so lovely to see each of your faces this morning. I have a few announcements uh, that I ask you to turn your attention to. This Tuesday on July 26th at noon, we will have our monthly uh, Palmer Downtown Lunch. And so if you are downtown on Tuesday, or you work downtown, or you live downtown, or you just want to drive downtown, um, <laughs> I invite you to meet up with your fellow Palmers at um, Tree Beards Cafe, in, uh, which is located inside Christ Church Cathedral um, on Texas Street. So I invite you to do that if that's of interest to you. And they meet at noon. On 728, that's this Thursday, um, for those of you who have purchased tickets to attend Episcopal Night at the Ballpark, the Astros versus the Sea, Marin sea Mariners, I think that's the team. Um, Seattle, whatever Seattle's team is. <laughs> um, if you bought tickets, uh, I want to let you know that some of you have already received emails with me sending you your tickets uh, because of the way they sold them to us. You have to have this app, and so I'm sending tickets along and I'm assigning seats as I go. So if you haven't gotten your ticket, an invitation to download your ticket via email, uh, it's coming tomorrow. And if you have, I invite you to go ahead and do that so you know where your seating is. And so we won't be giving out physical tickets, just uh, electronic tickets, because that's how they came to me. Um, you can park here 
if you want and then ride the train downtown or you can park downtown. Um, Christ Church Cathedral will be offering free parking, but I wanna say that I talked to um, Brent Broussard, who is one of the ticket agents at uh, the Astros Ticket House, and he said something like 800 Episcopalians are planning to be in our section. And so, I don't know about you, but I don't think Christ Church Cathedral's garage has 800 slots, so um, you can park here and ride, or you can try to park downtown. Christ Church Cathedral will be having a, um, a tailgate at 5 p.m. and then everybody can walk over to uh, the, the game. So I invite you to consider doing that. Let us know if you're gonna park here and ride because Roger and I are planning to, par to park and ride and you can ride with us around four. Jerusalem Peace Builders will be on campus here at Palmer from uh, August 7th through August, through the end of the week, August 12th, and then they will be back here on August 14th for worship with us. So I'm telling you all that because I know that as Palmers and as people who love and support Jerusalem Peace Builders and the work that Deacon Jack is doing so wonderfully, that you will be welcoming to them on uh, August 14th when they arrive. But they're also having an event here on August 11th, Thursday night at 6 p.m. It's a worship service and then dinner afterward. And so I invite you all to attend the worship service and then also to RSVP if you plan on eating dinner, if you plan on joining for the meal that follows that service. And you can um, RSVP to Dana Curtin, but you can also RSVP in the church office or at the welcome table after this service. So uh, you do need to RSVP so they know how many people they're gonna feed. Also, Jerusalem Peace Builders is going to the Holy Land, uh, to Jordan and Jerusalem, Jerusalem in October. And so if you're interested in doing that, let Dana know because they're gonna start sending out information. And finally, August 7th is our last summer refresh event. Um, our last, not our last time to fellowship. We fellowship all year. It's our last time that we're doing this summer refresh series. And we advertised originally that it was gonna be food trucks, but what we learned in June is that it is entirely too hot to do food trucks right now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer lunch per purchase via catering. So we're still gonna have lunch after church and I invite you all to, to still keep the plan to eat with us, but we're not gonna do food trucks. We're gonna have food ready to go up in the parish hall so everyone can stay cool and not sweaty and enjoy their meal and you know, maybe not get dehydrated. And so um, I invite you to consider doing that and then to come back at 5 p.m. for um, Gregory Jambada Powell and the jo Joy of Jimbe drumming. Um, if you like drums, if you like music, come and dance and hear music with us at 5 p.m. on August 7th. And then lastly, um, yeah, lastly, I lost my note. So look for more information in the Palmer on Tuesday. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to thee, O Lord our God, for thou, thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice of the world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not until temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these gifts, that to those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth and